Hey everyone, how's it going? Thank you for checking this video. We're gonna just revise the contents which we have discussed earlier. Uh, in case you have not checked my tutorials, please do them. I have the link down in the description below. It's the HTML playlist which we have covered pretty much. Uh, I know the number of I don't remember the number of videos, but yeah, we've uh, covered pretty much everything about HTML. This video in particular is just gonna be a revision. Uh, if you are a person who just wants to learn HTML in one single video, it's just going to be a fast revision of what we learned previously. Okay, so without any further ado, let's get right into the tutorial. So before doing this, I just want to remind you, we have all of the code in github i have the link down in the description below you could just click here to download download the zip extract and you could just follow along or you could code along okay it's not that difficult html okay so let's just close that we have this our directories so what are we going to revise first let's jump into html1.html so what did we do there in html1.html uh, we have the html tag we have the head tag, we have the title tag. The title tag actually shows uh, up what we need here. Okay, that is the title. And then we close the head tag, then we start the body. Body is nothing but the main content of the website. Okay, whatever we write in here goes into the website. Okay, so that is the body. And H1 till H6, if you had guessed it correct, good one. H1 is being the biggest. And as we see here, H6 being the smallest, they're all headings, okay? Then P is for the paragraph, okay? Then you could do the internal styling there. Uh, sorry, that's not internal, it's inline styling in there. Okay, then you have A, that is the anchor tag, that is for href, that is the uh, href, it's the link, the link where you want it to go. Okay, that is that, we have it here, okay? Whatever we type in, in here, appears over here. Okay, so then we have img src okay, image.jpg width equals to 400 pixels height equals to. So what does this tag do? img is for the image, okay, the, this is the image and src um, tells you the source of the image. If you're wondering, we have the image here in the same working directory itself. The image name is image.jpg, jpeg, we have it here. Okay, so we're just mentioning the width and height, otherwise the image is like crazily expanding over the screen if you remember. And then we just close the body and close the HTML, okay, because all of the tags must be closed except for few tags. Okay, so we have that. So, uh, that's it. So next, let's just go to the next file. Um, let's go to html2.html, right? Uh, let's just open that here also. So what did we cover in html2? Uh, the same thing HTML head title style so what is this style it is an internal styling right which you do it within the st style tags in the head section in the head section that's very important nowhere else okay then you have the link rel equals style sheet so what are we doing here we're just linking the style sheet okay and href is style.css why have we mentioned that because in the same directory we have style.css and we have written some rules inside style.css which we are applying let's just get back to this later okay we have html2.html okay so body tag okay h1 the h1 is the biggest heading and we have it here if you're wondering why that color is there like that we just get back to the style.css later in the part of this tutorial but just let's continue on with the p tag okay p class equals to element style equals to font size and title equals to hover okay what does this do when we hover over this one it tells the hover so that is called tooltip if you remember okay why is that occurring because we have used title here only solely because of title and how is that we are awesome yes we are appears that is because we have used this here and how does that svr comes to the next line that is because we have used br okay br is to like uh, put the next content to the next line cool so we have br and what are we discussing here it's p id equals to second p so what are these id and classes okay classes are like you uh, generalize a group of elements under a particular class id is for if you want to recognize an individual attribute or an individual tag not attribute sorry individual tag okay that is for id 
and why do we use IDs in classes to style them okay we'll see that in style.css in a moment then okay so we've given so much of space and so much of white spaces does it consider there no it doesn't okay html is bo least bothered about your white spaces so how do you make it bother about it you use this pre tag okay so the basic idea of this PRE tag is whatever the content you give inside, it is just going to appear the same way in indented, intended, no, it's indented, right? So whatever you give within this PRE tag is going to appear the uh, same way. Uh, it's going to consider your white spaces. So we're done with this HTML2. Let's jump on to HTML3.html. Let's just open what have we done here. Okay, so HTML formatting, this is interesting because we did a lot of things in this uh, HTML3. Okay, so we have the HTML head, title, link, head, and body uh, tags. Okay, I, I told you I'll show you the style.css, right? Let's just go to style.css. Okay, so body. Body here is for the whole of the body. It's like generalized um, style. Then you have the H1, the styling the H1. Then you have the, um, what do you call that? It is that whatever you call that and uh, second p okay uh, that is for the individual id okay and if you use dot in something that's for the class so we've styled the table with, we'll get back to that later because we have not yet gone to tables okay so html link aria because style sheet okay that's done and h1 done so div what are divs divs are used to wrap okay they're used to wrap a specific tags within it specific content within it within it so that you could like apply the styling to everything that is one reason then you could like semantically have them within that is another reason and there are many other reasons you can just google them or just if you have some more doubts you can just put the um sorry a comment down in the comment section i'll just try to answer them then you have the p uh, for the normal text and b for the bold text and strong uh, what is the difference between b and strong it's just like semantic difference okay not much difference but you have i e m same way then you have mark okay that's for highlighting then you have small that's for the small text okay then you have d e l that's for the strike through and you have a break okay you have a break there that, that doesn't have anything to do with the html formatting but we still used it there then ins for the underline and s u b is for the subscript and s u p is for the superscript Yes, if you think we're going a little bit fast, that is because we're just revising everything. We're not studying anything here, okay? In HTML4, what did we do? In HTML4, we just uh, talked about HTML quotations, where we used Q, which means HTML quotes, okay, block quote, okay? That is like, uh, it has nothing to do with what you're going to build, okay, block code, it's just block code goes like that. It has a few margin above below and uh, some crazy thing, you can check it out. Okay, then we have anchor tag. Then we talked about the, uh, I think we talked about float or something. Uh, let's go to style1.css because we have linked the style1.css there. Um, okay, did we talk about this? Okay, cool. So we talked about the visited, active, and hover, right? So when we hover over it, we want it to change to that color. So that is what we did there. And the visited is like, once you've clicked it already, that is visited. And active is at the moment you're clicking, okay? That is active. Then you have the background color white. Okay, we designed the that white box you're seeing outside, right? We designed it. And this one is the inner box. So we have the float, we have floated it left, so it comes there. Uh, what else? The width, height, cool. So we have an image here. <laughs> no, we had an image and we have deleted it. Then this is for the tables, we run it into the tables, and that's it. So float left, it floats it left, float right, floats it right, floating into none, it doesn't float at all. Okay, that is uh, the thing. Cool, those are the float. And background color, mention the color. Uh, margin what does margin do margin is for the space outside it okay if you give auto it tries to um, center align it okay that is what auto does so margin you could specify margin top specifically margin bottom margin left margin right the same thing applies for padding okay padding is like inner sides or something like 
you wouldn't understand it if I tell you, but just um, jump into the code, um, dive deep into the code and just figure it out for yourself, it's too easy, okay? Where were we? Okay, so let's go to HTML5. Cool, we are into tables. Okay, so HTML5, okay, so let's jump right into the tables. The table ID equals uh, T01. Okay, so we're given ID because we're gonna style the table, okay, in a moment, but just let's just revise the tags here. TR is for the table row and TH is for the table header. So each row must be wrapped within a TR. Okay, and th gives some bold tags to it and semantic importance that is it is a header. Okay, then td is for the table data. Um, I think that's table data, but this is how you do. But if you're wondering how these colors appear, we just styled it. Um, what did we use? I think it's style1.css. Let's see t01. Where are you? Okay, t01 is here. So we use the font size, we use the border. Okay, so this is the border for the table. Okay, not the internal elements because for the internal elements we have done it below. But before that, let's see border collapse equals to collapse. If you don't use border collapse, it's gonna look like okay, there is something uh, messed up. But border collapse will give you the double lines. Okay, but border collapse collapse will collapse everything and will just give you single lines. Okay, that is the difference. Then border spacing is uh, will uh, appear when you have not collapsed it and you want the cell spacing or border spacing okay that's border collapse then you have td yeah we've styled it okay with padding okay that, that's nothing to do okay so what is this int style so we've taken the id and uh, tr table row nth child even that is every even row must have a background color of 666 okay that is what we have done so that is that nth child even, you could use nth child odd also. Then, done. We are done with HTML5. Okay, in HTML7, we talked about HTML lists, okay. So let's go to HTML7. In HTML7, we talked about lists. Okay, so uh, there are three types of lists. UL, that is an ordered list. OL, that is ordered list. DL, and that is a description list. Okay, so UL is like, uh, uh, you get these bulletins and those dots and those dashes, okay? That is UL. So how do you like represent each of the elements inside? So you will li is cat. Li is the list item. So each of the item goes inside this li, 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 right? And then you have ol that is the ordered, ri ordered list and li, li. Li is the uh, list item, okay? Then you have dl that is the description list, okay? Then you have DT and DD, okay? So DT uh, is this cat here, and DD is whatever we're describing it. So that is all with HTML7. Let's just move on quickly to HTML8. So this is the iframes thing which we designed. Okay, so within the HTML8, what have we done? Oh, cool. So we have created the navbar here in this tutorial. So you see this navbar, all of this is designed here in this part of the tutorial. Uh, Google, Twitter, and call sheet. Once you click there, it's going to take you to those pages. I'm not going to do that now, but that is uh, how we learned how to build a nav bar, right? So, what else? Yeah, we talked about iframe. Iframe is any but a page, a web page within a web page that is in a box, right? That is that is iframe. So, we talked about that. So, let's just quickly see how we style the nav bar. That would be within style2.css. Let's just immediately open style2.css. Damn, this video is going too long, but bear with me, it's just a revision. You could feel free to skip this video. How do we style it? Okay, so this is the styling. So, UL, okay, uh, we've used the rules for the UL. That is list type none. It means like uh, do not use those bulletins and all. Then we have used those normal margin and padding you, you always experiment with that okay so overflow hidden is done because uh, some crazy things were happening always to prevent those crazy things within these nav bars and all use that overflow okay just remember like that it's not too complex okay then we have used the li a okay a is for anchor tag we are styling it here and once it is hovered we are using this yellow and red okay that is to style it there and the span thing just forget about it. 
Okay, so that is all for HTML8 and HTML9. We're pretty close to end. Okay, HTML9. We did this form thing that is, that was in the we completed them in the previous video, right? So this one is the input tag. Let's just go quickly to this one. This one should take longer. Let's just quickly go to that. So we have the field set. Uh, field set is for that outer box we have here. Here, okay, that is a field set. And legend is for this sign up and label is for this username you could just type uh, blindly only username but that's not a good way to do and input type equals to text value equals to dhrun name equals to username okay really required so what does that do input type equals to text input type equals to text is nothing but this one okay i mean sorry this this box okay and value is what we have written it is already pretty fine. Like once we reload the page, it will automatically appear that that is the value. Then we have the password. Then we have the radio. Then we have this is the select. Okay, where you have the select name. Okay, and we have the option and value there. That is the option. Then you have the text area for this huge area here. Sorry about that. Then you have the text area with this huge area here. Okay, that is there. And in the data list, they're super cool. You could click there and when you start typing, they just recommend you things. Okay, that is the data list. So that is all with HTML9. In HTML10, we talked about HTML entities. Cool. So HTML entities are nothing but if you want this ampersand symbol, if you want this greater than, less than symbol, you could not just blindly type them. They would work, but they could cause some problems there. You, you are not supposed to use them like that. So if you want a less than symbol, just use ampersand, LT, and this uh, table basically explains them all. Just pause the video and go through the table. Um, that is it. So thank you guys. Thank you for being with me. If you have stayed until this point of the video, then it's awesome. Otherwise, that's okay. So we're gonna move on with this. That is in the next video, I'm gonna tell you like what should you be doing next or what could you possibly be doing. So I can't wait to meet you in the next video. So until then, goodbye from Tarun.